Pinkie Pie loved getting up early in the morning. Ever since she was a filly, she'd always get up at the crack of dawn and start breakfast for her family, who'd drag themselves out of bed to see whatever it was she had made. That habit never quite disappeared as she grew older, even though those around her never seemed to appreciate hearing her clang around in the kitchen when they were still trying to get some sleep. The cakes were such ponies, and soon, Pinky's husband was too. Of course, they'd forget their reservations and grievances when they saw whatever it was she had decided to make for breakfast that morning. By the time Pinky had sent Sombra off with the foals to get them to school, she was already in the process of cleaning up plates and silverware, then preparing lunches for herself and Sombra for work. She hummed to herself merrily, small noises and scats escaping her as rhythms flitted through her mind. Pinky's ears perked up at the sound, her eyes flicking towards the entrance of the kitchen. A smile spread across her face in familiarity as she saw her significant other standing there, a hoof placed on the frame of the door. Hiya, Sombra! What are you doing? Sombra, however, didn't return her smile, not like he normally did. His face was stoic, tense and perhaps even a teensy bit nervous. Pinks, we need to talk. Pinky frowned a bit, her brows furrowing. Why? Is something the matter? Her eyes widened. Are all the surprise alright? Sombra shook his head, then paused as he realized his action. I mean, yes, they are. They're fine. He stepped into the kitchen and shut off the sink with his magic. There's something I need to tell you. Pinky blinked. Sombra arched a brow in confusion. What? Or did the kids ask you about the birds and the breezes? Pinky suggested. I guess they were gonna someday. Think we should use dolls to teach them? Sombra shook his head. Pinks, that's not what I'm trying to. Pinkie Pie was silenced when Sombras came into contact with her nose, a small signal for her to stop talking. She smiled sheepishly. Sorry. Sombra sighed. <sighs> Pinks, can you take a seat? I need to tell you something. Pinky smiled brightly. Okie dokie dokie! She slipped into the chair at the table. So, what is it? Is it good news? She frowned a bit. She raised a brow, her hoof going to her chin in thought. Or is it an in-between thing? Is it bad good or good bad? Sombra shook his head. Well, it's certainly news. He tapped his hooves together. Pinks, I'm not sure there's a way to say this, but... Pinky blinked nonchalantly. What is it? Sombra looked up at her. I'm pregnant. Pinky froze in an instant, her entire world suddenly ceasing to spin as those words left his mouth. Her eyes widened, her pupils shrinking to the sizes of pinpricks, while her entire body grew taut with shock. Meanwhile, Sombra was merrily staring at her calmly, awaiting to see if her reaction would go further than that. A couple seconds passed, and when nothing occurred, Sombra's stare turned from calm to worried. Pinks, you okay in there? Pinky didn't reply. In fact, she didn't move. She just sat there, totally shocked. Sombra frowned. If this is some way of messing with me, it's not funny. It's starting to freak me out a bit, actually. Again, Pinky did not move. Not a muscle, not a tendon, not anything. All right, I'm gonna go to work now. Sombra told her. I'll talk to you about this later, all right? When he began his exit from the kitchen, he looked back at Pinky, who still remained at the table. Yeah, I'll tell Twilight you said hi, even though you didn't. Then, with that, 
he left, unsure about whether or not he should be forth with his little prank. So, how'd your plan go? Oscar's dad asked. He was eight years old and a near picturesque representation of Sombra, save for his horn and his eyes, which were the same blue as Pinky's. He came past Sombra's knee whenever he stood up, but his short legs made it difficult to keep up with the long-legged strides of his father. Sombra glanced down at him. Not sure. She didn't seem to have any reaction. Like at all? A lispy voice from above asked. Sombra glanced up to look at Surprise, who was only two years younger than Oz. Her mane was curly like her mother's, but black like Sombra's. And like Oz, she was a unicorn. She was smaller than her brother by a couple inches, and because of it, she insisted that she let Sombra carry her on his back. She must have managed to crawl up into his mane when he hadn't been paying attention. Sombra, in response to Surprise's question, shook his head lightly. At all. She just sat there, frozen in shock. Oz shrugged. Maybe she decided to wait until you left to react? Or maybe she's plotting revenge. Surprise said exaggeratedly, giggling a bit. You know how mom is with April Fools. Sombra sighed. Oh, yes I do. I had to put up with two years of pranking from your mother before we got married and had you two. And then eight more years after you two got married. Surprise added, recalling Sombra's retelling of the story. That makes ten years. Sombra smiled at her. Hmm, that's right. He frowned a bit as he looked forward again. Ten years of pranking. So what do you think she's doing now? Oz asked. I mean, prank-wise. Sombra sighed. Uh, probably something to do with rearranging my sock drawers or something silly like that. She's not big on doing anything too chaotic, but she does enough to cause a hassle. Like the time she dyed your mane pink? Surprise suggested. Sombra rolled his eyes. Yeah, like that time. Your Aunt Fluttershy was in on that too, but you never hear that part of the story. He lifted Surprise off of his head as their house came into view. Come on, let's get inside. Uh, can I ride for just a bit longer? Surprise whined. You can get on my back. Oz offered, leaning his head forward. Surprise gasped with delight, then hopped on his back. <gasps> Yay! Oz let out a small grunt, but he put on a smile. <sighs> no problem. Sombra smiled a bit at the two of them, then put his focus back to the door. He turned the key and the doorknob in turn, then stepped in, the kids following in after. Pinks, we're home. There was no response. Maybe she's at Sugar Cube Corner? Oz suggested. Sombra shrugged. So be it. Are you too hungry? Yeah. Surprise replied. All right, what kind of sandwich do you- The Holy Celestia! Sombra shouted abruptly. Surprise put a hoof to her chin and thought. What kind of sandwich would Holy Celestia want? I don't know, probably something with Swiss cheese in it? Oz snorted. Or maybe some donut holes too. Bet she like onion rings too! Surprise stepped in after Sombra into the kitchen, her brows knitting together in confusion. What's mom doing here? As Surprise said, sitting at the table was none other than Pinkie Pie, who appeared not to have moved a single muscle since that morning. She... she was here when I left this morning. Sombra said, still a bit shocked. How long has she been in here? You know, I was worried for a sec that Sombra and their children were gonna come in and find, like, Pinkie had hung herself or something. That would be a dark twist to this story. But, like, then it would turn out she didn't actually hang herself, and that was, like, the reverse prank. She just, like, pretended to hang herself. I am glad the author decided not to go that direction, because that would be fucked up. I think we can all agree. Oz trotted over to the table. Uh, Mom? You okay? He jumped onto the chair beside her and waved a hoof in front of her. He shook his head at Sombra when she didn't reply. What did you do to prank her? Sombra sighed. 
I told her I was pregnant. Oz's eyes widened. What? You are? Who's the dad? He looked at Pinky, then at Sombra again. Oz, no, I'm not actually preg. You know, that would explain why you've gained some weight over the past couple weeks. Surprise observed aloud. Sombra stopped short in his sentence and looked down at Surprise to glare at her. Surprise, it's physically impossible for someone born of the male sex to give birth. What do you mean I've gained weight the past couple weeks? Surprise sucked in air through her teeth. <sighs> Yikes. Never mind. You look great. Hey, let's go see what's up with mom. Sombra opened his mouth to argue with her, but then stopped as he realized it wouldn't be worth his time. Kids, do you want to help me make the snacks? Mom, since you're frozen, does that mean we can have cake for breakfast? Surprise asked, ignoring Sombra. Sombra sighed. I suppose not. Hours passed, and there was still yet to be seen on whether or not Pinky would move from her spot in the kitchen. Of course, when he could see her. Oz, worried about whether or not Pinky had eaten that day, had offered some of his sandwiches to Pinky. When Sombra returned later on, the sandwiches were gone from sight. The same had happened after dinner when Sombra made her a plate, at the insistence of Surprise and Oz. Sombra decided not to question what had happened to it. Do you think mom's gonna be alright? Surprise asked him as he put her and her brother down for the night. I'm sure she'll be absolutely fine, he told her. He wondered how true it was as he left the room and shut off the lights. Then, as he walked through the hall and made his way to the bedroom, he looked down the hall one last time. He sighed, then stepped through the door. I'm sure she'll be fine. It'll probably wear off by the time morning comes. With that thought in mind, he walked into the room and slid into bed, finding the emptiness in the bed a bit unsettling. However, he figured that since Pinky was probably just going about things in her usual Pinky way, he should probably leave well enough alone for her to handle it. Stranger things have happened within the Pie family, that much he knew for sure. Then, as he finally managed to get comfortable, he found himself drifting off into sleep. One that would soon be interrupted by the sound most awful bit of profanity to ever escape a member of the Pi household. The first had been when Sombra stepped on one of Oz's building blocks, causing Pinky to wash his mouth with soap afterwards as a punishment. What the Came a high-pitched voice from downstairs. Sombra's eyes popped open, the word ending the sentence prompting a feeling of shock. Then, like he usually did, he found himself getting over it rather quickly. Alright, so I suppose this year's prank wasn't as good as I'd hoped it would be. He sat up in bed with a sigh. And now comes the rebuttal from our opponent. As if on cue, Pinky came zooming into the room, her hair crazed and her eyes narrowed. Sombra Sebastian Pi the Third! Just what were you thinking? Sombra blinked. In what universe is my name Sombra Sebastian Pi the Third? You know what, I'm not even gonna argue with you. He sighed once more. <sighs> so I assume you're gonna try to get back at me somehow. Sombra? Why didn't you tell me you were pregnant? Pinky exclaimed, stomping into the room. Sombra blinked in shock once more. What? It wasn't phrased as a question, but merely a statement for his confusion. Pinky continued, walking near the bed. Tubby? Sombra repeated, his eyes widening. And that you've been emotional too? I'm not emotional! Sombra protested, then stopped to look at himself. Well, maybe a bit right now, but that doesn't mean... And that you've been getting pregnancy brain? Pinky finished, jumping onto the bed with Sombra. Sombra frowned at her. Pinky, dear, I'm not actually pregnant. Pinky blinked and looked him over. Really? Cause you still look kinda tubby. 
Sombra sighed. <sighs> yes, Pinky, I'm sure. It is physically impossible for someone of the male sex to give birth. He paused for a moment. Unless they're discord. Then it might be possible. Pinky's mouth formed a small O in understanding. Oh, okay. She sighed and fell against the pillows. <sighs> That's a relief. I was really worried there for a second. Sombra sighed in relief as well, glad that the situation had diffused itself. Yes, well, consider this revenge for all the times you ransacked my sock drawers. You never even wear socks! Pinky argued. Not in front of the kids, I don't. Pinky rolled her eyes playfully. Are we gonna cuddle or not? I'm sleepy and I wanna go to bed. Sombra scooted over next to her and pulled her in close. Same here. Though, only one question, am I really gaining weight? Pinky snorted. Not really, <laughs> just a little. She snuggled into him. Plus, it's more comfy like this. It was hard to sleep with you when you were all muscly. I'm glad you stopped working out. Somber frowned. Nice to know, though don't expect it to stay that way. I'm not big on being soft and huggable. Pinky yawned and closed her eyes tiredly. Oh, please. You're gonna have to be when the twins come. Hmm, yes, I suppose so. Wait, what? Support me on Patreon and Ko-fi. Links in the description. Thanks for listening, and be sure to subscribe. Good night, everypony.